All right, today we are going to continue talking about vectors. And first of all, we're going to talk about velocity. Velocity is a vector quantity that refers to the rate at which an object changes its position. Velocity is a vector quantity. When evaluating the velocity of an object, one must keep track of direction. It would not be enough to say that an object has a velocity of 55 miles per hour. One must include direction information in order to fully describe the velocity of the object. For instance, you must describe an object's velocity as being like 55 miles an hour east or 55 miles an hour north, or it's got, you got to have some direction in it to make it a true velocity. Speed, on the other hand, is a scalar quantity and does not keep track of direction. So you can say your speed is 500 or 55 miles an hour, but your velocity has to include direction. Velocity is a vector quantity and direction and, and is direction aware. So an airplane moving towards the west with a speed of 300 miles an hour has a velocity of 300 miles per hour west. So really the only difference between speed and velocity is that velocity includes a direction. All right, so the component form of a velocity vector. If you're trying to find the component form of a velocity vector, you take the magnitude of your velocity times cosine theta, and then you take the magnitude of your velocity times sine theta. So speed is your magnitude, if you're talking about velocity, and your direction angle would go there where theta is. Okay, so... It says, find the component form of the velocity vector that represents an airplane descending west at a speed of 100 miles an hour at an angle of 30 degrees below horizontal. So you can see this plane. This distance right here is 30 degrees below. This would be the horizontal. So that angle right there is 30 degrees. But if we, our angle, the way we measure angles is we go from zero. So from here to here would be 180 plus 300 gives me a direction angle of 210. So my speed, again, is going to be the magnitude. And the direction angle is going to be the 180 plus the 30, which is 210. So when we set this up, we set up V equals 100, that's the speed, times cosine of my direction angle, comma, my magnitude 100, the speed, um, sine my direction angle 210. And if you type this in the calculator, you get those coordinates. That would be the component form of the velocity vector of that airplane. Okay. All right, so you solve this one. Hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 569.90, negative 152.70. So it says an airplane is flying on a bearing of 105 degrees. When you measure, you measure from north. So from here to here would be 90. So about 105 would be this way. This would be 105 degrees. Okay. However, we measure from zero. So our direction angle, this is the bearing. Again, when you, you, you got to keep uh, the, the, your bearing is from north. Theta is from zero. So to get this angle, I have to come around all the way over to here. So to do that, if this is all of this is 105. We know this much is 90, which means this much has to be 15. 105 take away 90 leaves 15 degrees here, which means this side would be 75. And then here to here is 90, 90, 90. So we're going to add 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 75. So my theta, my direction angle would be 345 degrees. And my magnitude is the speed would be 590 miles per hour. So you set up your velocity vector, which would be your magnitude 590 times cosine of your direction angle 
45 degrees. And your y coordinate would be, or your vertical component, I should say, would be 590 times sine of 345. So you type those in the calculator. This comes out to 569.9. This comes out to negative 152.7. And there would be your velocity vector for this plane. Okay? All right, so this one says a vector that represents the direction and speed of an object in motion is called a velocity vector. In example 8, we express a wind's velocity vector in terms of the wind's magnitude and direction. So it says that the wind is blowing at 20 miles an hour in the direction 30 degrees northwest. That means west of north. So here's north, here's west. 30 degrees west of north would be this angle right here. And it wants me to express its velocity as a vector v in terms of i and j. So to do this one, all right, we have a bearing of 30 degrees, which means my direction angle is going to be from here to here. So I'm going to add 90 to 30. My direction angle would be 120 degrees. The magnitude is going to be the speed, which is 20 miles an hour. So to get my velocity vector of the wind, I'm going to take the magnitude times cosine of my direction angle and the magnitude times sine of my direction angle. And if I type those in, I get negative 10, and I get 17.32. They wanted it in terms of i and j, so we say negative 10i plus 17.32j. Yeah, yeah? There's your velocity vector. All right. So next, we have this example 9, finding a resultant force. It says two forces, and I, I tried to put kind of the steps you need to follow so that you can look back and go, wait, what did we do first and what did we do second? Because anything that involves these two forces um, acting on an object, okay? So you have two forces, force one and force two, of magnitude of 10 and 30 pounds respectively act on an object. The direction of force one is 20 degrees northeast, so that would be 20 degrees east of north. There's that one right there. Um, and the direction of F2 is 65 degrees northeast. So that would be this one right here. All right, And then the resultant force would be that one. And I don't like this picture. This is what they call the, I think they call this one the parallelogram something. I like the head to tail. It makes way more sense to me. So I'm going to draw you a little sketch if this makes sense, if this picture, if this diagram makes sense to you, use it. I, I don't see it very well that way. So for me, what I do is I say, all right, you've got these two forces. You've got one that's a wind, right? Oh, it doesn't even say it's just a force, okay? So one of them, you have this uh, bearing of 20 degrees northeast. And that has a magnitude of 10 pounds. So that length is 10. Um, let's see. And then what I do is I make my little end there and I put my next force. So i got to kind of put a little compass up here. Okay, because this would be nautical north. And this one is 65 degrees. <laughs> That's way more than 20 degrees. Pardon my drawing. 65 degrees would be, I don't know, maybe like this. Okay, so then there's your set. This is force one. This would be force two. And it is 65 degrees northeast. And it has a force of 30 pounds. So then what you can think of this as is your resultant vector would be from the origin to the end of that tail or the end of that vector. Okay, so this would be force 3, which is what I'm looking for, okay, um, I don't know if you want to call it force F3, they call it the resultant force, I'm going to call it F little r. The resultant force would be that. 
So that's what we're trying to find. All right, so what you do, first of all, is you find your velocity vector for each force. So the velocity vector for this first one, and remember, it has a bearing, it has a bearing of 20 degrees northeast. That gives me a direction angle. If from here to here is 20, then this way would have to be 70. So if I set up my force vector for force 1, or my velocity vector, sorry, I get the <coughs> magnitude, which is 10, times cosine 70, and the magnitude 10 times sine 70. And that comes out to 3.42 comma 9.40. If I do the same thing for force 2, for force 2, its velocity vector is going to be the magnitude of it, which is 30. It had a bearing of 65 degrees. So if this from here to here is 65 degrees, then from here to here would be, would be 25 degrees. So I've got 30 cosine 25, comma, 30 sine 25, which comes out to 27.19, comma, 12.68. All right, so then we have to figure out the resultant force, and to get the resultant force, you add these two forces together. So my resultant force, I'm going to use that little r there, is going to be my for, for force 1 plus my force 2. So I'm going to add these two. So 3.42 plus 27.19. And the y's, 9.40 plus 12.68. And that comes out to 30.61 comma 22.08. Okay? So now, there's my resultant force, and what I need to do with the resultant force is find its magnitude. So, I'm going to do the square root of 30.61 squared plus 22.08 squared, which gives me 37.74. So there's my magnitude of the resultant force. Because now, to get our direction, we have to solve one of these. One of these two equations, okay? You can either use the A coordinate and find theta that way, or you can use the B coordinate and find theta that way. You do not have to do both. I mean, I can show you both to get the same answer, but you only have to do one. So I did this one. So I said the A coordinate, 30.61, has to equal the magnitude of V, which, that's what we found right here, so that's 37.4 times cosine of theta, which is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the direction angle of this vector, the resultant vector, okay? So divide by 37.4, divide by 37.4, I get cosine theta equals 0 0.811075, blah, blah, blah. Arc cos, both sides. And you get theta equals 35.8 degrees. But remember, when we get our answers, that's from x. When they want their, that, that's my direction angle, but they want the angle from north. So what you do is, oh, I don't that picture there. Um, yeah, see how they 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 plotted the 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 resultant force for you is that 30.61, 22.08, which means oh we could have found it a lot. We could have found it with tangent too. And you could use these, or you could just set up the function and go this angle would be. Uh, tangent of this angle would be opposite over adjacent, and you could arc tan to find it, but we found it this way. Either way would work. At any rate, what we found was this angle was 35.8.
when they're what they're looking for is what is it from north so I'm looking for this measurement well if from here to here is 35.8 subtract from 90 and you get 54.2 so oops sorry Sorry. Um, so your what what it asked for was it, it says express the magnitude to the nearest hundred. So the magnitude of this resultant vector, the one that's in red, the magnitude is 37.74, and its direction angle would be uh, your direction angle would be the 54.42 degrees. Yeah. Okay. You try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got three. All right. So it says a force of 90 pounds acts on an object at an angle of 55 degrees. Okay. So, on our axis, switch colors. We've got 55 degrees from this way. And it's got a force of 90 pounds. And then it says a second force. So we'll go and we'll change colors. We got a second force that is going to stick. I like, I like head to tail. I don't like the parallelogram one. So I go to the end of that one. And then from that one, we've got an angle of negative 60, which means from here they would go. Oh, I didn't think about that very well, did I? Just a second here. Okay, I'm back. I threw myself off there for a minute because um, I, I was going from nautical north. It, when it doesn't say like north, northeast or whatever, or doesn't say a bearing, then they're just talking straight angles. Okay, so my picture is messed up here. Ah, oh, crap, and I kept that one. Okay, so let me draw a different picture. All right, so we've got... Let me change colors here. All right, so we're not going from north. We're going regular. So we've got this vector coming up here at an angle of 55 degrees. Okay, and then what's going to happen is we have our little axis up here, and we're going to go negative 60 degrees. Again, normal like we would normally. So negative 60 would be down this way. So it's going to come down like this. And that has, this one has a force of 90. This one has a force of 100. And my resultant vector would be this one right here. Okay. So what, let's see, what are we doing now? All right. So again, if I follow my little plan like we did last time, we've got to find the components for F1, and that's going to be um, its magnitude, 90, times cosine of its angle, comma, 90, sine 55. That comes out to 51.6, comma, 73.7. To get the vector for force 2, it's going to be its magnitude times its angle, comma, magnitude, sine its angle, which comes out to 50, comma, negative 86.6. To get my resulting vector, 
I add F1 and F2, so I have 51.6 plus 50, 73.7 minus 86.6. I mean, you're adding, but when you add a negative, you subtract. And that gives me my resulting vector of 101.6 comma negative 12.9. So now I have to find the magnitude of R which is going to be the square root of 101.6 squared plus negative 12.9 squared, which gives me a magnitude of 102.42. Okay, so there's the magnitude of the resultant, 102.42, so it's got to be this one. But let's find that direction angle, all right? So what you can do, let me do that tangent one if you're looking at if you look, what happens when you make this resultant vector is you end up with, well, somewhere you end up with a 90 degree angle, but I don't draw very well. 155, and then negative 60, and then draw that out. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like my drawing. Okay, I'm gonna use the other one. All right. So if I go with, I can find the um, angle by doing a equals the magnitude of r times cosine theta. My a coordinate was one. Of, oh, I know. I got it because I gotta redraw it. Sorry, I'm trying to get it out of that picture. Um, I want to show you that tangent thing. So if you come back here and you look at these coordinates, that's going to be the coordinates of my resulting vector, which is 101.6, negative 12.9. So it's somewhere it's not drawn to scale, obviously. That's going to be my resulting vector, okay? So, and it has a magnitude of 102.42. If I... Um, um, this side is going to be 101.6, this side is going to be negative 12.9, and I'm trying to figure out theta here, alright, so if you did um, tangent right there, I could do tan theta equals negative 12.9 over 101.6, and then to get tan alone, I would do arc tan. to both sides, and give me just a second, I forgot my calculator, and if I type in arc 10 of negative 12.9 divided by 101.6, I get theta equals negative 7.2 degrees. There's your um, direction. Yeah? All right. The next thing we're going to talk about is using vectors to find speed and direction. A plane's course is in a specific direction. That's its airspeed, and that's one vector. The wind pushes it from another direction. That's another vector. The resultant vector would be the ground speed of your airplane. Okay? Oh, oops. There we go. All right, so it says an airplane is traveling at a speed of 500 miles per hour with a bearing of 330 degrees. So if you look at my drawing down here, okay, if you go from north, 
again, they give you bearings, so we're going from north. So from north, we're going 330 degrees that way, which means um, my... Oh, it means that there's 30 degrees left right there from, from here to the axis, not that other vector. Okay, and then it says the plane reaches a certain point where it encounters a wind. So up here at a certain point, the wind starts blowing and it has uh, a direction of 45 degrees northeast, which means east of north. So there's your 45 degrees going this way. And it has a magnitude of 70 miles an hour. Your resultant vector is going to be from the origin to the last part of that one. Okay, so the brown is your airplane, the blue is your wind, and green is my resultant vector. It kind of gives you a picture of what we're doing. So I kind of tried to set this up for you on, on steps to do. First of all, you're going to have to figure out your plane stuff. Well, it said that the plane had a bearing of, hmm, what did it have a bearing of? A 330 degrees, right? So if I do right here, there's going to be 30 from, from zero. I'd go from here to here is 30, 90, plus 30 more um, would be 120. So your direction angle is 120 degrees. The plane's magnitude is its speed, which is 500 miles per hour. So the plane's vector is going to be 500 times cosine 120, 500 times sine 120. That comes out to negative 250, comma, 433.01. So we figured out the velocity vector for the plane. Now we're going to have to find the, the wind information. Okay, so for my wind, it's going at a bearing of 45 degrees from north, which means from zero, that's also 45 degrees. The wind's magnitude is 70 miles per hour. So my wind's vector is 70 times cosine 45, 70 times sine 45, which comes out to 49.5 comma 49.5 funny when you work with the 45 degree angle how many doubles you get. Alright, so after we find the plane and the wind, then we got to find the resultant vector, which means we're going to add them up. So my R is going to be negative 250 plus 49.5 and 433.01 plus 49.5, which gives me a vector of negative 200.5 comma 482.51 okay so we've got the resultant vector now what are the resultant speed and direction of the plane so now I'm going to use this to get the resultant speed and the direction of the plane but we're out of room so we're going to go to the next slide oh for crying out loud So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the coordinates of my resultant vector. My resultant vector was oops, let me get right there. my resultant vector was negative 200.5 comma 482.51. So if I draw me a little sketch of that, okay, if I have I'm gonna go negative 200 Point five this way and then up 482.5 right so I go over and up right somewhere right there yeah and there's my triangle yes that point negative 200.5 comma 482.5 and so from there, if we want, well, I'm sorry, first let's find the speed, let's find the magnitude. So to find the, the magnitude, we take the square root of negative 200.5 squared plus 482.51 squared, which gives me 522.51, that's the speed, so that's miles per hour. There's the speed of the plane. And then we have to get the bearing of the plane. 
all right which again you could use those you could use what i showed you before or the tangent one is actually easier all you do is, is you take your coordinates from your resulting vector plot them and that's always going to give you your two legs so it's always going to be tangent so i'm going to set up tangent of theta equals 482.5 divided by negative 200.5 arc tan both sides and I get theta equals theta equals the absolute value of whatever you get because I'm going to get a negative 67.4354 so that means my theta is 67.4 but again remember that's from x so um, I need more room here. So if we do 67.4 from x, that is here, to get the bearing of the plane, again, when they use the word bearing, they're saying they want your answer from north. So if this is 67.4, how much is it from north? Well, subtract it from 90, and you get 22.63. So the magnitude is 522, 522.51 miles per hour. And the direction angle and the bearing of the plane, not the direction angle actually, the bearing of the plane would be at 22.6 degrees east of north. Okay. Alright, let's look at one very similar but with a little twist on it. Okay. This one, it says an airplane is flying in the direction of 148 degrees with an airspeed of 875 kilometers per hour. Because of the wind, its ground speed is 800 kilometers per hour and 140 degrees. Find the direction and speed of the wind. So they gave me the plane and they gave me the resultant one and they want me to find the wind. So it's just kind of a switching the order we're going to do it in. So first of all, we're going to do the plane's bearing in the direction mode. So it says an airplane is flying in a direction of 148 degrees. Okay, 148 degrees would be... I'm trying to look at my picture and figure out what the heck I do. Oh, 148 degrees would be about right here. I don't know, maybe not that far, but there would be about 148 degrees. If you break that up, this much would be 90, which means this much would be 58, which means this much would be 32, right? So to get my angle from um, 0, I would come all the way around to here, which would be 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 32. So my directional angle is 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 32 is 302 degrees. The magnitude is its speed, so that's 875. The plane's vector is going to be the magnitude times cosine theta, magnitude times sine theta. Type that in the calculator, you get 463.7, negative 742.04. Now we have to find the resultant vector, this information. It tells me that the resultant vector, um, it's got a bearing of 140 degrees, so that's going to be a little less than that one which means if this is 140 then this is 90 which makes this 50 which makes this 40 so my angle angle from 0 would be 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 40 which is 310 degrees the magnitude of the bearing or of the directional uh, resultant vector sorry is 800 miles an hour so my resulting vector is going to be 800 
cosine 30 comma 800 sine 30. That gives me 514.23 and negative 612.8. So now to find the winds vector. Well, if you find your resultant vector by taking the plane plus the wind, if I'm trying to find wind, minus P, minus P, and you get the wind vector is going to be the resultant vector minus the P vector. So if I take the R's x-coordinate and subtract the Y's x-coordinate and take R's y-coordinate minus the plane's y-coordinate, which is a negative 742.04, which is going to make that positive, I get a wind vector at uh, 50.53 and 129.24. Okay, so now we're going to take that wind vector because we have to find the direction and speed of the wind and we're going to plot it. We're going to go over 50 and up 129. This would be 50.53 over. This would be 129.24 up and we can find the, the angle and the magnitude, but I need more room. So, if I take my resulting wind vector, which was 50.53 comma 129.24, again, if I draw that, sketch that out, this is 50.53, this is 129.24, tangent will let me find that, so if I do, sorry, I keep doing things out of order, because it doesn't matter what order you find these in, obviously, alright, so I'm finding the bearing of the wind for, oh I can't, I need the magnitude, don't I, no I don't, alright, so I take tan theta, equals 129.24 over 50.53 arc tan arc tan and I get theta equals 68.6 .6, but that again is from zero I need from north so if I plot 68.6 .6, then my from north direction would be 21.4 degrees from north. So my bearing of the wind is 21.4 degrees from north. And then I need to find the speed. Well, that's just the magnitude of your vector. So the square root of 50.53 squared plus 129.24 squared, which gives me 138.77 miles per hour. So the wind is trapped going and blowing at 130, 138.77 miles per hour and uh, from the from 21 degrees north. Alrighty, so you try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got 183 degrees. Alright, so I'm going to start with my plane. Give me a little picture going here. He's heading due south. Okay, he's heading due south with an airspeed of 192. So, if he's going due south, for me, that makes my directional angle equal to 270 degrees. Its magnitude is 192. So, its vector, velocity vector, is 192 cosine 270, 192 sine 270, which comes out to 0 comma negative 192, which makes sense. You're not going to have any horizontal component because you're not going left or right. You're just going straight down, 192. All right, so now let's do the wind over here. For the wind vector, it's coming from a direction. Now, this is, this is kind of key. It's, it's not blowing in a direction of 53. It's coming from a direction of 53. So it's coming down like this at 53 degrees from north. 
that's a little high, but whatever. All right, so this is coming at you from 53 degrees north, which means this is 37 degrees. So my direction angle is 37 degrees, and my magnitude is 13 miles per hour. So my wind velocity vector is 13 times cosine 37, 13 times sine 37, which comes out to 10.38 comma 7.82. So if I, then I need my resultant vector. My resultant vector is going to be these two added up, so 0 plus 10.38 comma negative 192 plus 7.82 gives me 10.38 comma negative 184.18. So if I sketch that out a little bit, positive and negative is going to be somewhere down here. So this is going to be 10.38, this is going to be negative 184.18. So to figure out my theta, I can do tan theta equals opposite, negative 184.18, over adjacent, 10.3. And then if I kill tan with arctan, with arctan, I get theta equals negative 86.77 degrees. But this is from x. So if I draw that. Negative 86 would be somewhere down in here, yeah. Alright, so if I, this is negative 86.77, which means this is 3.23. So if I measure this from north, there's 90 plus 90 plus 3.23 gives me 183.23. Okay? They didn't ask for the speed, so we don't have to find the magnitude. All right. So in this example, it says, Pilot Megan McCarty's flight plan has her leaving San Francisco International Airport and flying a Boeing 727 due east. So her flight plan is to go due east. There's a 65 mile an hour wind with a bearing of 60 degrees. So that plane is, or that wind, if, if her plane is, is, is on this, it's going to be pushing her... Uh, this wind that's coming in, wherever she's, like if she actually set her compass for, to go east, that wind is going to blow her higher. She's not going to be going east. She's going to be going high because that wind is going to push her up. So you have to compensate for that. You've got to figure, she's got to figure out, she actually needs to set her bearing a little lower so that when the wind pushes it up, what she actually ends up flying is due east. So... It's kind of different because now we don't know the direction angle of the plane. So we, we kind of start with the same plan, all right? But I don't know my direction angle of the plane. That's what I'm trying to figure out. They want to know, they want to know what the airplane's ground speed will be, assuming that there's no uh, wind. Speeding, assuming with no wind that it, what they're telling you is that the plane has a magnitude speed of 450 miles per hour. But I don't know what to set that theta at um, yet. Okay, so all I can do for my plane vector is call it 450 cosine of whatever theta it comes out to be, 450 sine theta. My wind... We do know. The wind is coming at 60 degrees, which means its direction angle is 30 degrees. Direction angle, I'm trying to shorthand this, would be 30 degrees. Its magnitude 
is 65 miles an hour. And so the wind vector would be 30 times cos, I'm sorry, 65 times cosine 30, 65 times sine 30, which gives me 56.29 comma 32.5. So my resultant vector is going to be the sum of those. So I'm going to have 450 cosine theta plus 56.29. 450 sine theta plus 32.5. Now, she's trying to go due east. The only way to go due east is if your y coordinate is zero. In other words, you don't want to be going up or down, you just want to be moving horizontally. So I've got to set this has to be equal to zero. If it's not, then this thing isn't going straight east. It will either be going a little bit high or a little bit low. So this has to be equal to zero. So it's kind of a, I don't know, easier way to find your theta, I guess. Because what I can do is I can say that 450 sine theta plus 32.5 has to equal zero. So if I solve this, I'm going to subtract 32.5, so I have 450 sine theta equals negative 32.5, divide by 450, so I take negative 32.5 and divide it by 450, and I get negative 0 0.03. negative 0 0.072 repeating. So if I arc sign that, I get theta equals negative 4.14, but again that's from x. So if I sketch that out a little bit, negative 4.14, but from north I would add 90 to that, and again from north it's not going to be you're 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 not going to add a negative. You're just you're finding directions, and from north you're going 90 plus another 4.14, which makes the theta equal to 94.14 from north. Okay, um, which it didn't ask for, so I don't even know why I found it. All it wanted to know was its ground speed. Speed is magnitude, so I got to find the magnitude of r. Oh, but I guess I did need to find that because the magnitude of r is going to be the square root. See now, again, because it's going to be the square root of 450 cosine theta plus 56.29 squared plus 0 squared, because remember my y coordinate has to be 0. But in order to evaluate that, I've got to plug in my theta. Don't plug in the direction from north. You plug in our direction from x. Otherwise, the math ain't going to work. You, you can't make the math do two different things. So this is going to be, if I turn theta into, or if I figure out what 45 cosine of negative 4.14, close the parentheses, plus 56.29 is, I get the square root of 101.17 squared plus 0 squared. Well, that's nothing, and the square kills the square root, so the magnitude of R is 101 point... Oh, how did I get that? Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Should come out to 505. Oh. Alright, All right, hold on. Oh, I typed 45, not 450. Sorry. So 450 times cosine of negative 4.14. Plus 
56.29. There we go, sorry. <laughs> I just typed instead of 450, I typed because I wrote 45 instead of 450. I don't do it. So that comes out to 505.12 squared. The square plus zero squared. The square kills the square root, and the speed is 505.12 miles per hour at that direction angle. They didn't ask for that, but there you go. All right. So you try this one. Hit pause. Come back when you're ready. And hopefully you got three. All right, so again, an airplane flies on a compass heading. In other words, it wants to be going 90 degrees at 310. All right. Um, the wind affecting the plane is blowing from 332 at 40 miles an hour. What is the true course? So they're asking you for the true course and ground speed of the airplane. So for my plane, I don't know its bearing or its direction angle. So I keep that theta. I do know that its magnitude is 310 miles per hour. So the plane's vector will be 310 times cosine theta, 310 times sine theta. My wind has a bearing of 332. So it's nice. If it's coming around here at 332, that would leave 28 left. So if I measure this from 0, that would be from north. I'm going to measure from 0, which would be 90 plus 28. So it has a direction angle of 118. And it has a magnitude of 40. So to get my resulting vector, I have 310 cosine theta plus, oh, I didn't write the wind vector. So my wind vector is 40 times cosine 332, 40 times sine 332, which comes out to negative 18.78, 35.32. So when I add these, I'm going to have 310 cosine theta minus 18.78. And 310 sine theta times plus 35.32. Okay, again, because they're flying on a heading of 90 degrees. So you're, again, 90 degrees, you're going straight east. 90 degrees from north would be going straight east, which means this has to be zero again. Okay, so if I set that equal to zero, I would have 310 sine theta plus 35.32 equals zero. And if I solve this, I get 310 sine theta equals negative 35.32 divide by 310, and you get sine theta equals Uh, oh, I didn't get the decimal. I just wrote it like this. I divided by 310, divided by 310, and then I got sine theta equals it. negative 35.32 over 310, and then I just arc signed from there where I didn't have to get a decimal, and I got theta equals negative 6.54 degrees, but again, that's from X. So from X it would be negative 6.54. From north, that would be 90 plus 6.54, which gives me a direction angle of about 96 degrees. And then to get the speed, all right, I'm going to take the magnitude of R. But again, before I do that, I got to plug in my theta right here. So R would be 
cosine of negative 6.54 minus 18.78 comma 0. So if I do that, I get r equals 289.2 comma 0. And then if I find the magnitude, it's going to be the square root of 289.2 squared plus 0 squared, which that's nothing. The square kills the square root, and my magnitude is 289.2 miles per hour. How they got 331, I mean, it's got to be just because of rounding, although I didn't think I round well. Yeah, I did. I rounded everywhere. So it's off because of rounding. But that should be the answer you get. Okay? All right. And now we're talking about the finding the effect of gravity. So it says a force of 30 pounds just keeps the box in figure 6.15 from sliding down the ramp inclined at 20 degrees. Find the weight of the box. All right. I'm going to have to draw this again so that you can kind of see where these forces are coming from. You've got an incline at 20 degrees, okay? And you have this box sitting on top, and it's not moving. And the reason it's not, it can't be moving is, well, the only way it's not going to be moving is because of these forces acting on it. You have this force that comes straight down, and that's called the force of gravity. Okay, force one basically represents the weight of the box with gravity. Okay, so you have that acting on it, holding, you know, pushing it straight down. Its weight is pushing straight down. You also have a vector that's parallel to the ramp that's acting on this force because it would be, you know, pushing it downward. Okay, we call that force two. And that's the force needed to keep the box from moving, keep box still from sliding. You also have a perpendicular force acting on this. Perpendicular would be like this. I mean, perpendicular to the ramp, not to the, not to the anything else. So you would have this perpendicular distance to the ramp. Okay, that is, if you look at that one, okay, this and this force, if you, if you drew this out and connected it, you get this right triangle looking thing here. Does that make sense? This force right here is the same as this force right here. That's your F2 coming down at you this way. And it told you that that force is, that force keeping that box, the force acting this way on the box is 30 pounds. So from here to here would be a magnitude of 30. And I'm trying to figure out what this force is, and the magnitude of this force. In other words, I'm trying to figure out the weight of the box. Well, here's what you got to know. And without going into all of the, the geometry and everything with it, whatever this angle is on your incline is going to be the same. This angle in here is going to be the same. And now you see I have this right triangle. And I know opposite. And I'm looking for hypotenuse. So all I do is set up sine 20 equals opposite over the weight of the box. So to solve, multiply by W, we have W sine 20 equals 30. To get W alone now, divide by sine 20. Type it in a calculator, and I get W equals 87.71 pounds. There's the weight of your box. All right, you try this one, hit pause, come back when you're ready, and hopefully you've got 1390. All right, so if we kind of draw this picture, we've got a ramp with an incline of 28 degrees, we've got a boat sitting on the ramp, and it says a force of 652 is required to pull a boat up a ramp, so you got this force of 652 pulling it up, yeah? All right, let's get our vectors. We have, obviously, the force vector, the gravity, gravity one. And then you have the one that is parallel to the ramp, which that was the 60, 652. 
and then you have the one that is perpendicular to the ramp, like this. And if you connect those, there's your little right triangle. That's 28 degrees. And we know that this vector, which is the same as this vector, has a magnitude of 652. And I'm trying to figure out how much the boat weighs, which is this one. So again, I'm going to do sine of 28 equals 652 over the weight of the boat. So, uh, multiply by W. W times sine 28 equals 652. Divide by sine 28. And I get W equals 1388.7955, which, if you ask me, would round to 13 or 1389, but again, rounding somewhere screwed something up. Alright, so describe how vectors are used in the real world. Well, we have wind speed vectors wind vectors, plane vectors, so wind and flying, um, we just learned about the force of gravity, those are all examples of how vectors are used in the real world. Alright, so we are at homework, happy homeworking, and I will see you next time.